Hey, it's A Helmet Collector here, and today's video we're going to take a look at the four panel death card of Johann Greimel. Uh, so, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so, panel one here says We ask you, O Lord, to help the souls still suffering in purgatory, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. And we see it's a 300 days indulgence as laid out by Pius X in 1908. Uh, moving to the interior of the card here, we have a nice uh, full panel photo of Johan. And moving to panel three here, I would like to point out before we kind of get into this, this looks like a very basic, simple card. But one of the things I love about collecting death cards is you run into really awesome stories that you wouldn't know otherwise. And in this case, uh, because of the research I was able to do, we actually have a pretty good account of the battle that uh, Johan was killed in. Uh, so moving on to panel three here. Uh, for pious remembrance and prayer, Johann Greimel, who was a Gefreiter in an infantry regiment, uh, who was wounded on June 9th and died on June 14th, 1940, at the age of 27, in a field hospital for the Fuhrer in his fatherland, may he rest in peace. Now, Johann was born on January 10th, 1914, in Neuenkirchen, and was a member of the 5th Company of Infantry Regiment 85, part of the 10th Infantry Division. Uh, his cause of death is not listed, but it is noted that he died in a field hospital in Tolignan, France, and is currently buried in the Neuer's Pont Maugis Cemetery. I butchered that, I apologize. Uh, block 2, Gray 59. So, interestingly enough, I do actually have a unit history for the 10th Infantry Division. And there are a few pages in here that actually deal with an action that the regiment was involved in on the day that uh, Johann was wounded. Uh, so at this point in the Battle of France, the 10th Infantry Division is attempting to cross the Ein River, and I actually have a map that I'll be putting on screen here in a second. I'm going to go into the preparation for the assault across the Ein, and then we're going to go right into the, uh, the battle description that's actually in the book here. Uh, the division attacked in the following formation. On the right was Infantry Regiment 20 under uh, Oberst Schmidt. In Group Atenier, the leader was Rittmeister Freiherr von Milis, uh, with the 2nd Rodfair, or Cycling Squadron, of Aufklärungs of Thailand 10, the 6th Company of Infantry Regiment 20, part of the 8th Company of Infantry Regiment 20, one shock troop of Pioneer Battalion 10 with two medium flamethrowers, a light infantry gun platoon, a pack platoon, a platoon of two centimeter flat guns, and a 15 centimeter field howitzer, and their target was the area south of Atenier. Grupa Island was west of Atenier. Uh, their leader was Hauptmann Newman Hennepper, as he was the uh, successor of the fallen Major Schmoger, with the 3rd Battalion of Infantry Regiment 20, consisting of the 9th, 11th, 12th, and 5th Companies, Two Pioneer Shock Troops of Pioneer Battalion 10 with flamethrowers, two light infantry gun platoons, one pack platoon. The 7th Company had to take over the cover of the left flank. The 1st Battalion of Infantry Regiment 20, without the 2nd Company, which was deployed near Atenier, moved to the area west of St. Lambert before the attack began. 15 light and four heavy batteries were intended to support the regiment's attack. On the left was Infantry Regiment 85 under Oberstleutnant uh, Krakow, and under his command was Group Riley. Uh, with the leader of the Hauptmann Dr. Trieck, supported by pioneers and other weapons. The 2nd Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85 had as its target Hill 130, two kilometers south of Riley, and later Roche. No artillery preparation for their attack, but strong artillery support. Uh, Group Montaigu, with the leader Major Schultz, the 1st Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85, supported by pioneers and heavy weapons, had to take Riley, and later the heavily fortified Hill 104.4, east of Roche. Since this battalion had four obstacles to overcome, being the Ein, the Canal, the Railway Embankment, and Riley, the artillery preparation was extended to X plus 15 minutes, and mortars were used on Riley. All heavy weapons of the regiment, including the reserve battalions, were looking for emergent targets of all kinds as the attack began. The divisional artillery, reinforced by significant parts of the Corps artillery, was put under the command of Oberstleutnant Schenk, the commander of Artillery Regiment 269. On the right of the 10th Infantry Division, the 86th attacked Givry, and on the left, the 26th attacked Samui and later Vonk. The Corps artillery engaged enemy artillery groups south of the Bois de Vonk, and the enemy B-points were observed and blinded. The course of the day of fighting was as follows, starting with Group Atenier. Uh, the leader of the 2nd Company of Infantry Regiment 20, Leutnant Gessner, fell before the attack even began. After French artillery fell into a cellar in which the first assault wave, the platoon of the 2nd Company, 23rd Infantry Regiment, was waiting, several non commissioned officers and men were also killed with him. Nevertheless, the 2nd Assault Wave, a separate platoon of the 2nd Rodfair Squadron of Aufklärungs of Taiwan 10, forded the Ein and gained a foothold on a narrow embankment between the Ein and the Canal. The 6th Company of Infantry Regiment 20 also reached the embankment on the other side of the Ein with two groups. But when German artillery fire was brought forward, the enemy fired from all cylinders again. The strong German artillery fire was not enough to put the enemy out of action in the fortified Ottomia. After a difficult battle, the soldiers lying on the dam had to be taken back to Ottomia. 
Kofkurpa Island suffered heavily from the enemy artillery fire, even its initial, initial position. The energy of the head of the 5th Company, Oletnant Treffer, forced the crossing over the canal, which was flanked by enemy fire on both sides. The 5th Company clung to the foot of the steep slope occupied by the French. Recognizing that the operation against Atenye no longer promised success, Infantry Regiment 20, around midday, shifted its forces to Kofkurpa Island and placed the 3rd Company under its command. This company, under the leadership of Oberleutnant Hobble, also forced its way across the canal and clung to the steep bank alongside the 5th Company. In both companies, there were constant enemy counterattacks and bitter hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Ain Valley was covered in a deep veil of haze and smoke, so that the B-point artillery and the heavy weapons ready to fire in the rear area could not see any targets. In Group Relief, the 2nd Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85 crossed the canal in the first hours of the morning and settled on the embankment on the other side. Here, wild grenade battles broke out with the French beyond the towpath, i.e. a few meters away, which lasted until around midday. A small group of the 5th Company, led by their chief, Leutnant Semmer, who was also joined by the head of the 13th Company, Oberleutnant Seboff, several platoons of group leaders from the 5th Company, and Oberfeldwebel Bever from the 1st Company of Pioneer Battalion 10, pushed through Hill 130 on the first attempt, favored by the fog drifting in from the Bois de Vaux, and settled here 1,500 meters in front of the bulk of the battalion. Suddenly, when the fog lifted, the small group saw Frenchmen in a small forest close in front of them. They immediately attacked and took 30 prisoners. Lieutenant Summer forced the prisoners to face northwest and with their hands raised, run toward his battalion. When the French fighting there saw prisoners appearing in their rear, their resistance collapsed. 200 men and two officers surrendered. For this action, Leutnant Semmer was soon awarded the Knight's Cross and the Iron Cross. The 2nd Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85 immediately continued the attack, took the Ferme de la Forette, and established communication with Lieutenant Summer's group on Hill 130. The regimental commander of Infantry Regiment 85 immediately led his 3rd Battalion, under Huntman uh, Venner, forward, which extended the line they had won to Hill 130. Division leadership, recognizing the soft spot, subordinated the 1st Battalion of Infantry Regiment 41, under Major Rohrbacher, to Infantry Regiment 85. The battalion took really after a fierce local battle, in which Huntman Roots and his 2nd Company distinguished themselves. Then, the 1st Battalion of Infantry Regiment 41 rolled in an eastwardly direction along the railway embankment, turned south, and sat to the left of the 2nd Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85 at Hill 130. The prisoners taken there belonged to the 18th French Infantry Regiment and a colonial Senegalese battalion. Uh, the Mortayou group also had a difficult battle. When the 1st Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85 first crossed the Ain, they were hit with heavy artillery fire and constant flanking fire from Smort. Only when really fell after the 41st attack, the 1st Battalion crossed the canal. The 26th Infantry Division's leading wave of attacks overran the enemy to the east and south of Samoa and Volk, and pushed through for kilometers to the south. But the fight continued to their rear, as the French held firm at Samoy and Volk, and from there still flanked the 10th Division. It was only on June 11th that the 26th Infantry Division managed to eliminate the vast enemy pockets in both villages. The parts that had pushed through to the south were also thrown back in the evening. Only a small group stayed at fontenil Fulme, two kilometers southwest of Rome. This was significant, as the 17th century canal bridge north of it was undamaged. The Army Corps used another regiment of a police division subordinated to it, and Machine Gun Battalion 11, to clean up the forest. The doctors also did admirable work in the hot hours of fighting. The ZB Trooper Arts of the 3rd Battalion Infantry Regiment 20, Oberst Arts Dr. Rondel, advanced to the island and organized the care and transport of the wounded in the face of enemy fire. All doctors and medical personnel worked in the same, most self-sacrificing manner. Whether it be the troop doctors on the front line with their stretcher bearers, or the doctors and medical personnel in the medical companies or field hospitals. During the night, two artillery guns of the 1st Battery of Artillery Regiment 10 were the first to succeed to advance to the island via a weak Flossick Bridge by Reilly. There were no more serious fights that night. The wounded were also received, and at least some of the troops beyond the island were provided with food and ammunition. After the hot days of of fighting and using its last reserves, Infantry Regiment 20 was no longer able to attack. It was supposed to be replaced during the night of June 9th through 10th by Infantry Regiment 41. The parts of Group Melius lying there were taken from Atenier that night. The defense of the positions of Atenier were taken over by the 1st Company of Infantry Regiment 20 under Hotman Langazi, joined by a cycling squadron of Afkorongs of Tailong 10. The island group was only relieved the next night. On the Rili Peninsula, Infantry Regiment 41, the main part of the Divisional Reserve, was deployed. The regiment took over the right-wing cut with the 3rd Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85 and the 2nd Battalion of Infantry Regiment 41. The left section was retained by Infantry Regiment 85, with the 2nd Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85 and the 1st Battalion of Infantry Regiment 41. 
The 1st Battalion of Infantry Regiment 85 followed as reserve. Infantry Regiment 20 was pulled out and moved to the area around La Berezina and put at the disposal of the division. So yeah, a lot of really good information about the fierce fighting over the Ain there. As we read earlier, a small group of the 5th Company, led by uh, Leutnant Semmer, was able to actually push through along with some other elements and take Hill 130. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to know whether or not Johan was with this group. It's possible. Uh, he could have also been with a larger part of his company that did not assault the hill at that point. Uh, but regardless, in this heavy fight along the Ain, Johan was wounded and only a few days later would pass away at a field hospital as a result of those wounds. And like I said earlier, this is a pretty basic, simple card. And unless you had the unit history, were able to do the research and everything, you wouldn't have this really interesting story about the heavy fighting that was going on during the Battle of France. Because, you know, the Battle of France ends up kind of being a footnote in a lot of World War II history books, but there was some very heavy and fierce fighting throughout the, uh, the French campaign, as we see here. Uh, moving down to the bottom of the card here. Sweetheart of Mary, be my salvation, 300 days indulgence, and Sweetheart of Jesus, be my love, 300 days indulgence. Then moving to panel four here. O Mary, Mother of God and Mother of Mercy, pray for us and for those who have departed. 100 Days Indulgence is laid out by Pope Leo XIII in 1883. And I do actually have a few other cards for members of the 10th Infantry Division. Uh, Fritz Kreilinger was a Feld double in the 4th Company of Infantry Regiment 20 and died of an illness on May 20th, 1939, uh, shortly before the war began. Franz Vess was a Gefreiter in the 3rd Company of Pioneer Battalion 10 and would die at Riga, Latvia on July 8th, 1942. And Heinrich Josef Harings was a Feld double and Zugführer in the 11th Company of Grandier Regiment 41 Motorized and would die at Belika, Ukraine from a gunshot wound in the lung on September 30th, 1943. And of course, all three of the units that these soldiers were a part of, the 20th Infantry Regiment, the 10th Pioneer Battalion, and the 41st uh, Grandier Regiment uh, were of course all part of the division and actually were mentioned in that battle along the Iron River there. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting how you're able to kind of put all the pieces together once you have the information. And um, that's probably one of my favorite things about collecting these cards is being able to tell these wider stories. Uh, but yeah, so overall, really interesting card, really interesting uh, stuff I was able to find here. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment down below. Love hearing from you. Uh, thank you all for watching. Happy collecting. And I'll see you all again very soon.